straight into the Bishop Boy Charles, the face of Trey Tables, and we are back. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, so we went to Texas and we played in nationals. Uh, you guys will definitely be seeing some content being posted up. We have a vlog for that. Uh, the event went great. Uh, it's what happened after the event is what put us on the delay where uh, one, I got delayed coming home. Two, I'm getting really sick. It's put me out of commission for, uh, for a few days. I think about four or five days I was out of commission. Um, I hadn't been to locals in a while. I hadn't really been doing anything. So I was trying to recover. But we're back and uh, we're, we're going to be vlogging again as usual. Um, we are still playing U Bell. The deck's not going to change. Uh, we made some couple minor changes to the deck itself, so you guys will get to see that today at the end of the vlog today. But uh, as usual, we're going to see how well we do for our local tournament, see if we can uh, defeat it and win. And uh, we'll let you know. See you guys after round one. All right, guys. So, round one. On round one, we played against. Um, it was. Can I think? Oh, uh, Runic? It was a Runic White Forest deck. Uh, interesting deck. Um, I've seen people play it with Runic before. I don't, I don't personally know if it's the best way to play it, but um, game one I got uh, pretty easily, and I, I think he just couldn't uh, do anything to stop the board presence. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't die roll, and he couldn't really push through it, so... Uh, I won that pretty easily, like got full combo, I think he had one hand trap, which I was like super surprised at, but uh, um, but uh, yeah, there's just one hand trap. Uh, game two, uh, he went first, of course, and um, it was a struggle, like he actually had a decent hand, I, I did my best to play through engine, but um, I just couldn't, couldn't break it. Uh, breakthrough and then actually win the game so I ended up losing game two but we moved into game three and it's approximately about six seven minutes left in the round so uh, in mid combo I basically used Lacrima burn for 1200 uh, preventing him from getting his own turn time was called in mid combo and uh, I ended up winning round one, uh, on time with Lacrima Kudos to Konami for creating a card that's in engine that allows you to win in time. So, hooray. Uh, round two. Round two, we played against uh, Sprite, which was super, super surprising. But um, uh, it was actually not a. Uh, kind of caught me off guard. I think game one, I bricked like. Not necessarily that I break, but I made a choice, a conscious choice to not make a Phantom of You Bell when I had the cards in hand to do so, because I wanted to test uh, the cards um, my hand was, because like, I think I had like two Dark Beckoning Beasts, uh, uh, a, two Droplets, and a Spirit, and I didn't know what I was playing against, so I didn't know if trying to push for full combo um, with like the most weakest version of the combo possible after getting Imperm because like he did Imperm me when I snow almost some Dark Beckoning Beast and so uh, being Imperm or no not Imperm Valored being Valored on Dark Beckoning Beast was a bit nerve wracking because like if if he doesn't if he has another Valor or Imperm then I just lose like 100% and like so I just decided to play with what I had set the cards and pass and it wasn't enough the droplets didn't do enough i didn't expect spray and so yeah he pushed uh, like really hard and i could not do anything about it but game two and three i was able to control the game pretty well and i knew what i was playing against so i adapted pretty easily and i didn't break so uh, i was able to win them uh game two i got full combo he couldn't really push through it game three um i think i used what was it? I think he had an inoptimal hand, and if I'm not mistaken, I uh, it was I impermed at a certain point, which uh, caused him to pivot, and then he couldn't uh, he couldn't make the most optimal board, and I was able to drop it and then win the game uh, off of it, uh, locking him out and taking control of the board. Present. So breaks uh, us at round two. We are now two and out. Round three. Round three, we played against Snake Eye, which was a very tough matchup. Uh, he wins dice roll, 
and literally just full combo. I couldn't break through it. I tried really hard. Um, I actually ended up, uh, I think, playing Droplet and then sacrificing like my entire hand uh, to to basically mitigate the board and just like try and keep the cards from activating and I make a phantom so that I can also counter the princesses in grave but um, I didn't expect that he was also maining the bestial and he had a, a bestial magna hood which just completely crushed me so uh, I get cooked game one game two uh, full combo uh, playing through uh, I think it was Imperm. Uh, I can't remember which hand trap it was, but I played through one hand trap uh, and pushed through it. Um, I ended up ending on Desiree Apo uh, plus um, uh, Set Trap and uh, Phantom. So it was it was definitely not going to be easy go from the breakthrough, and I was able to make my interruptions at the proper time and prevent him from. Uh, making a board in game three game three we are approximately uh, approximately I'd say about 10 minutes left in the round and uh, he definitely burned me for Lacuma in the midst of his combo but he did pass to me with a very um, I don't say I wouldn't say it was like the best board but uh, it was it was a decent board. I did open Droplet, and um, and I uh, used it to my advantage to take it, to stop the Desiree and to stop uh, another play. He had the field spell up, and he used the field spell to reborn his not reborn, but summon his uh, uh, summon his um, dragon to the field. Which I wasn't sure why, but uh, when he did so, I was able to um, basically make Phantom. Uh, on board and then uh, put a Yuma on board and swing into his his flame merge for basically 5k damage to him making up the damage difference and then proceeding to go into main phase 2 finishing up combo and time was called and so I went in time because I was ahead of my points beating out the lack of a burn uh, so I got lucky right there uh, round 4 we play the Yubel mirror match which uh, which was really solid. Um, I think I won that 2-0 though, so the opponent was pretty new to u -Bell, but he did have a pretty complete deck. Um, I think he was missing a couple key extra deck cards, like an SP or something like that, but um, game one, uh, I win dice roll and I full combo. He could not break through it, and uh, he tried really hard to, but yeah, he, he couldn't break through it, and uh, that's just really best best thing to say honestly about it game two I opened so bad but uh, somehow some way we pulled it through because we didn't win the rounds 2-0 but like my hand was so many doubles it was like thrown with spirit uh, and then two um, two lotus and a uh, dark reckoning beast and then for turn I drew a second spirit so like it was just pretty much in a sense full gas, but I had to play the cards right, and and I happened to play them well enough that I was able to prevent him from uh, killing me the next turn, and he couldn't. He had no outs for the uh, the phantom, and when he did out the phantom, I uh, floated into with a throne because he he um, no actually. He he made he played he played a card I wasn't I, I wasn't expecting him to play. He played uh, the uh, Typhon in his extra deck. So on his next turn, he made Typhon to out it, and I was holding the last spirit in my hand. So he outed it, and I went to uh, use my Phantom to prevent. He used his Phantom to prevent, but because he made Typhon, he couldn't summon off of his Phantom. And I had a spirit in my hand, and when he attacked, I summoned spirit uh, defense, getting a nightmare pain. And on the very next turn, because he burned out almost all of his resources, I uh, was able to put three U Bell monsters on board and swing right into uh, the Typhon for game. So, winning that 2 0. Well. Round five. Round five, we played against Tampai. Uh, this matchup was. 
technically supposed to be in my favor. Of course, uh, I win game one. Game one, he uh, we 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 broke dice roll. I lose the dice roll. He makes me go first. So immediately I'm like, all right, cool. I'm playing against Tempo. I got this. Um, and like I cited. Uh, I win that match, like, game one super easy without no problem. I think where my big mistake was, so game two, uh, after winning game one um, with no issue, game two, I sided. I figured he would go first, and I sided okay, uh, but I didn't really see much of the side. I opened, like, three droplets against him in perm and then one uh, Fiendsmith. But he opened two Bissiels, which crushed my Fiendsmith engine. And so uh, I lose game two because of it. Game three is where things got really bad. So I did side. And I, I think that might have been my mistake, as I probably should have just went reverted back to what the main deck was. Maybe uh, maybe um, leave out the Motomies, but the Motomies, but like just go back to the actual, just what the main deck was. And uh, game three, when I opened my hand, my hand was Spooky Dogwood, which I sided it in because I don't, I, I'm not citing Deep Barrier right now. And I was just playing a time card for going second, and it's Spooky Dogwood um, was just the only thing I could think of if I can combo and keep in hand in tandem with a Spirit of Yubel. It makes it really hard for Tempai to beat me. Um, and I gain a lot of life points out of it. And. I opened the one spooky dogwood, I opened the one red dog, I opened a freaking uh, triple tack, I opened droplet, and um, oh, and a uh, squirmer. So I was able to start combo and at least get to uh, the, the uh, Fiendsmith engine. Uh, because of that, but right when I got to sequence, he impermed me, and that was pretty much it. Um, the best I was able to do, which I think my mistake was, is uh, I kept the drop, I kept the um, the triple attack instead of the droplet, and I think it was probably better for me to keep the droplet. But I didn't think about that, and he impermed me, and the triple attack was dead, and I wish I had kept the droplet. If I had kept the droplet, then I may have may have been able to survive and win, um, survive and make it to the next turn. But because I didn't keep the droplet, I ended up losing the game. And we finished the tournament with an uh, X1 record. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get to uh, standings, and we'll let you know. Uh, we got first to second um, with our record and uh, going to the deck profile. All right. Peace. All right, YouTube. So we're here. We're going to do our deck profile today. Uh, just to say we got second place. So the deck performed well. We actually got our uh, we pulled multi in our uh, pack. So can't be disappointed there uh, pulling multi today. So feel like a winner. Um, other than that, uh, the deck performed well. I think I only had one brick all day, and that was in the very last game of the final round. So, of course, it was probably one of the most important rounds of the day, but nonetheless, the deck performed extremely well. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the deck profile itself, starting with the main board. All right. So, we are playing three Fiendsmith. We are now in the Fiendsmith era, so... Uh, Fiendsmith is going to be pretty much in every U-Bell deck uh, being played right now, and probably every U-Bell deck profile you guys are going to see from me from here on out. So, three Fiendsmith uh, engravers. So it's like one of the best cards in the game right now. Uh, we are playing three Lotus. Uh, I actually made this change from the WCQ. I think I was only playing one uh, Lotus at the WCQ. Um, I made this change because uh, I also made uh, another change to the u engine, but I just wanted to make sure I saw the card as a starter, um, and uh, learning new combos where you, this is probably one of the best starters to have, I went back to playing three. I still dislike opening multiples, but I think three is fine because you want to see the card. So, uh, three it is. Uh, we are also back on three squirmer because we want that extender um, and we want to be able to go into um, into uh, un 
not underworld goddess, cold sky. If uh, we uh, if we um, if we get stopped anyway, so having this as an extender because every monster that you start with is a fiend. This card is always just an extender in hand, so uh, that's it's that's uh, it's pretty much the best best way to go. All right, and then we play our Dark Beckoning Beast package. Um, we're playing two Dark Beckoning Beasts, one uh, Chaos Summoning Beast. I just can't bring myself to bring, play three of this card. Um, uh, two is fine. I I kind of want to go back to one, but. I think two will be fine. Uh, I don't mind starting with the card. I just, I just don't see myself playing more than one of it. It's just, I think this is fine ratio. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, and then are you Bell Engine? Uh, we are on two Spirit, one you Bell, and we are no longer playing Terra Incarnate. Um, we cut Terra Incarnate completely out of the deck, and. You know what? We didn't miss it. We didn't miss it at all today. Uh, the deck performed extremely well without Terra Incarnate. We never had a problem getting to full combo. Um, and uh, and I never had to worry about drawing it as a brick in my hand. So it was it was wonderful. I actually just enjoyed playing without it all day today. So no Terra Incarnate. All right. And then the last two monsters are one of, uh, which is the Savara and the Lori. Uh, this card is still kind of annoying to draw as, as a... Uh, as an opening hand card, but nonetheless, I think this is the only card where it's like, besides you, Bell, where I'm like, eh, I don't want to see it, but it, it's cool, it's cool. All right, on to the spells. Three throne, um, absolutely must positively have to do. This card is broken. Even if you're not playing Terra Incarnate, this card does a lot. Um, it allows you to recycle your uh, phantoms, which I think that's pretty much what I did with it all day. I used the effect, like I was able to put use phantoms as fodder and then pop u bell cards and put phantoms back in the extra deck. So this card right here at three still busted and it makes it so that you're it feels like you're playing like four, five, six phantoms in your deck instead of instead of just two. So uh, really, really good. Um, we are playing the uh, second best spell starter of the deck, which is uh, three opening up spirit gates. This card is insane. If you open this card, usually you want to start with this card immediately. This is the card to start with. So, uh, uh, I can't say much more than that. This card is broken. <laughs> uh, we are playing three um, triple tactics talent. Uh, this card performed extremely well all day. I think this this is this is the format for this card right now because. <clears throat> people want to play hand drops and um, having knowledge of potentially what your opponent's playing or even drawing into more cards that you may need comes up quite often and then the fact that if you're playing into a board you can use it to break boards take cards that your opponent has this, this card is just insane so um, yeah, I think tri three triple talk is just absolutely correct right now. Uh, I have been enjoying playing this card. It has not felt bad to me at all. So uh, we're playing three droplet. Um, this card, I think, was also one of the best cards of the day. Uh, I've broken so many boards because I saw this card in my hand, was able to push through more, way more than I should be able to. So uh, this card is definitely worth playing. If you guys aren't playing Droplet, if you're playing a heavy hand trap build, I would suggest trying this out. This card actually, like, you don't have to worry, but you just play into the board now instead of trying to uh, stop the board from happening. So it's, it's been really solid. Uh, last couple spells, one of us, we play one Nightmare Pain. Yes, we're only on one Nightmare Pain. Um, I think it's been fine. I actually haven't missed playing the second one. It does. It was kind of a, a like pulling teeth for me to just play one, but I got there and I've been fine with it all day. So, uh, and this is the second tournament I've actually played um, with just one. So, I, one is fine. I think one is absolutely correct. Uh, terraforming, we are playing one for one. I think this card is really good. I don't know why people are not playing it, like people were cutting it, but I think this card is still absolutely worth playing. And last is the tract. Um, I just, just, it's, it's tract. It's a part of the Fiendsmith and you need it. Uh, I was playing more than one. Um, I still kind of like playing more than one, but uh, I just playing one today because I was trying to keep the deck down to 40 cards. So we did play a 40 card list today. Uh, 
for our engine uh, trap cards, we did play the one of all Mobile Chamber. I, I still love playing this card. I don't want to cut it, so it's uh, really, really solid. And then for hand traps, we played three Imperm, and we actually main deck three Mold Charmies. Mold Charmy, actually, I think... Uh, I opened it twice today, and one time it was Ash, the other time it wasn't, and so I was able to play and get some extra cards, so it's definitely worth playing. Uh, I think even using it to bait Ash when you're when you're going second is actually really good too, because if your opponent have to use up the Ash just so that they can play, that means you now don't have to deal with the Ash on your turn, and it allows you to soak up hand traps out of the way, so uh, it was definitely worth it. So three more turns. All right. Onto the extra deck. Uh, for the extra deck, we are only playing two phantoms. Um, I don't think I don't think I need more than two. Um, uh, two is fine, especially when you're not uh, playing uh, Terra Incarnate. So like your only focus for uh, your throne is to return those back to the extra deck. So uh, two is great. Um, we are playing the TCG exclusive, which is uh, the Necro Clip and the Aerial Eater. These cards are broken as hell, and I absolutely 100% believe that you should always be playing these cards if you're playing your bow. All right, <laughs> it's, it just does so so much for the deck. Um, our Fiend Smith Fusion monsters, which is Lacrima and Desiree. I summoned Desiree way more than I summoned Lacrima, but I did summon Lacrima today, so don't get me wrong. Uh, but this card right here is nuts, and I absolutely, I absolutely believe that if you're playing Yubel, you should be playing this card. Uh, I think if you're playing Fiendsmith at all, you should be playing this card. So this card is this card is insane. Um, or one DDD. Um, I still play this card. Uh, I don't play Verusia, so this is just this. It's just DDD. We don't play Verusia because uh, Verusia is just. Um, I feel like it's not consistently able to be made turn one and i've learned that this deck struggles to clap back with the extra deck and you're kind of more focused on the fiendsmith and the fiendsmith it's engine itself and then the u-bell engine as if you end up in a grind game so i just cut uh Varuja so that i wasn't uh so focused on trying to use it um after turn one um on to the rest of the deck uh, link monsters we play uh two link ones uh, Amarash and Requiem. Um, I'm still on the fence about this card. I'm actually thinking about swapping this for the uh, for the new Rabbit uh, Hat card. That card seems like really cool, and then being able to play the Trap card to give you another interruption. Um, but this card comes up randomly every once in a while, makes it so that um, I don't just lose to an Imperm if my hand is really bad. So we'll see. I might test next week without this and just play the, uh, the rabbit card and see what happens, but, uh, but yes, the one Requiem, we need it for the Fiendsmith engine, uh, we are playing um, SP, we're playing Yama, we're playing uh, Ritzel Rage, everybody knows this, uh, we are playing <laughs> Close Sky, that's like absolutely must be played, and then we're playing Sequence, um, and this is pretty much pretty standard, so uh, not much to explain right there. The last card we are playing, we are playing Appaloosa. Uh, I switched back to playing Appaloosa from uh, the WCQ because it just it's just easy to get into. Um, I'm not a huge huge fan of it, but it is a nice in piece to the to most of the combos. So I, I, I'm back on playing it, even if it's just an apple for two. It's better than like no interruptions at all. So. That is the extra deck, and last but not least, the side deck, which is super simple. We are playing three Ash Blossom. Uh, we're playing three Spooky Dogwood for uh, time purposes. I am siding Droll. Um, I don't side it in that much, so I don't know. I might cut this card. Uh, it's 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 kind of meh. So, um, and then three Dark Rulers, and because we don't want to lose the control decks, uh, we're playing three Cosmic Cyclones. So. And that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Uh, like I said before, the deck performed really well, and I'm not unhappy with it at all. I got second place today. I did work in the very last game. Otherwise, the deck just done done really, really well. So if you guys like this list, you should give it a try. If you're looking for any combos or setups, uh, definitely let me know in the comment section below, and I'll help you guys out with anything. Uh, this is Charles, the face of Trade Tables, signing out. Peace.